We've been looking at the different things that we find uh, on 10th Street over the years. In our last video, we looked in the 1300 block and Aikman Bakery. And as uh, we come into the 1400 block, we see that uh, the whole 1400 block, the frontage is taken up by the old Washington School. In a previous video, we saw that the Washington School originally was on 6th Street. The school was built in 1859. But in 1918, a brand new Washington School would be built on 10th Street. And here you see a photo uh, during the construction of that school. I'm making this video in 2018, so it was 100 years ago this year that this school was built. In order to build this school, uh, they had to destroy pretty much that entire uh, block that fronted 10th Street, including these seven houses. The school was constructed by August Schultz and his sons, and according to this ad, they were pretty proud of it. Other than the high school, this is one of the few schools that was put on a postcard. And you can see that postcard right here. There's two things that leave no doubt about when this school was built. The first, of course, is the cornerstone. And then if we go up to the very top of the building and zoom in here, we can see also uh, the numbers 1918. David Shannon Boyd has taken several photographs of what the old Washington School looks like now, and some of you kids that used to go there may enjoy looking at them. I love the columns on the front of the school. I actually think that the front of this building is more impressive than the Port Sharon High School, which only has two columns in the front. This is the south end of the building, and if you look closely there on the third floor, you can see, uh, I'm told this is where the old circular fire escape used to be. It was a chute. Here's another photograph uh, that David posted recently, and it's of the blueprint of the Washington School, and it shows in this blueprint exactly where the chute was. Fire escape chutes were pretty popular at one time in the school system. Uh, this isn't the Washington School, but you can see what this chute looks like. And it seems to me it would be safer than a bunch of kids clambering down the steps of a fire escape. But then again, what do I know? You girls may remember this sign, but probably the door didn't look like this. This is a look at the north end of the building. The old school now houses the Washington School Restoration and Storage Facility. They cater to people and organizations that specialize in restoration, repurposing, and upcycling of architectural salvage. In this photograph here, you see the newer addition to the Washington School. Today is a type of a church. Uh, it's called Only Believe Outreach Ministry. You all also used to have a business in the school uh, building as well. And at one time, it was used as a haunted house, the House of Judgment. Here's a couple of photographs of the gymnasium at the school. This is looking upward at where the balcony used to be. I guess it still is, but not in very good repair. This gives you a little better overall view of the gym. And you can see all the people walking through there, seeing if they can find an item they want to buy. This is the letter that so many people tried to get. If you got the major letter, there's a major and a minor. If you got the major letter, man, it seemed like it was so big, and you were home free when you had that letter. I never got it because I went to the Cross Street Rivals, Garfield. But I did get the big G. Before we leave the old Washington School, we want to look at one other tidbit, and that's this picture here of a kindergarten class. This was taken in 1951, and perhaps some of you youngsters, or perhaps I should say old-timers, might remember some of these folks in this picture. Maybe even you. And here are all the names. 
All right, let's walk across the street from the Washington School and uh, go over to White Park. White Park is called White Park because, well, it used to be a park. Not like today, but at one time it was a park uh, similar probably to Pine Grove Park. It was what you would call a walking through park, a place to relax or perhaps play. The perimeters of the park was Chestnut Street up to the north and uh, White Street uh, to the south, uh, 10th Street to the west, and 9th Street uh, to the east. 9th Street, you say? Well, there is no 9th Street in this map. Well, you're right. Uh, there is no longer a 9th Street that goes through that block, but at one time it did. And I put that gray stripe in there to show you where the street was. In the very middle of White Park, the first Port Huron Hospital was built. How do we know all this? Well, from the Sanborn map. As we zoom in on this map, we see the Port Huron Hospital sitting all by itself in the middle of the block. And of course, you can see how 9th Street goes right through there. I'm not sure it was still a park at that point, but uh, you can see the word white going across on an angle. The block uh, to the east where uh, Woodrow Wilson School is today was all uh, occupied by homes. And you can see them designated here on this map. And this photograph here gives you an idea what this hospital looked like. This is looking at the rear of the hospital. You can see a couple of nurses and a couple other ladies, it looks like as well, uh, standing on the sidewalk there. In this photograph here that the hospital provided, you can see the same four ladies a little closer up. And we can see that we also know the name of one of those ladies and that she was a secretary that served on the hospital board for 18 years. It doesn't say which lady, but at this point in time, I don't think it makes a difference. Here we see the hospital looking uh, from the front. Not a real great picture, but I'm happy to have it. The hospital was built in 1882, and in this photograph here, it looks like they're breaking ground for the hospital. The hospital was built uh, mainly from the efforts of this lady here. This is a light of mill. Here we have a photograph of the first uh, nurse supervisor. And it says here that she possessed neatness, kindness, and firmness, the three most essential qualities. And she was faithful and reliable. Now notice these last words, under the most trying conditions. Keep in mind that they didn't have all the technology that we have today. And they were treating things like scarlet fever and, and yellow fever. It was one of the reasons it was called Port Huron Hospital in Home, because it was home to patients uh, for a long periods of time that were quarantined uh, into this hospital because of their disease. Nurses were expected to do much more uh, than they are today, actually. Uh, here's a list of the things that nurses were required to do back in the 1800s. Uh, you can just scroll down here at your leisure and pause and, and see these things, but I thought it was quite interesting. Items like number six, graduate nurses in good standing with the director of nurses will be given an evening off each week for courting purposes, or two evenings a week if you go regularly to church. And keep in mind, these nurses came to work at 7 a.m. and left at 8 p.m. and worked even on Sunday and given two hours off uh, uh, for worship purposes. So you gotta be dedicated to be a nurse, back then and, and even today. The hospital that was in White Park was eventually torn down when the new hospital was built on Richardson Street. This was known as the City Hospital. And the land on which the hospital stood became a park again, as you can see from this Sanborn map uh, that was produced years later. All right, let's go across the street from White Park and Kitty Corner from the Washington School to this place right here, Schwem's Rubber Stamp. The signage Schwem's Rubber Stamp is very misleading. Ask any of the students that went to the Washington School. They hung out at this place, and it wasn't because of the rubber stamps. It was all about penny candy, popcorn, hot dogs, and root beer a favorite place for the kids to hang out 
not only from the Washington School, but also from the Woodrow Wilson School. Of course, back then, kids would remember Schwem's looking like this. This would have been before they built their new building. This photo was, of course, taken in the wintertime, but uh, notice the house right next to the building uh, where Schwem's uh, used to be. Uh, this house uh, would eventually be uh, where the new Schwem's would be built. In this photo here, you can see both Schwem's buildings side by side. Today, where the original building was, is now used for parking. This is a photograph of Mr. Schwem. These next two pictures uh, show the inside of Schwem's, uh, the original store. Uh, these were provided by Rick Lloyd, and he says he took these in 1985 after the Washington School had closed. And so Mr. Schwem had removed all the candy from the display cases that you see here. But there's one thing that wasn't removed, and that's this uh, iron pipe railing that goes around the display case. And almost for certain, this was to keep the, the little rug rats from putting their nose and their bodies up against the glass while they picked up their penny candy. That way they didn't break the glass. You can still see the popcorn machine, though, uh, over there by the door. Rick also said that Carl Schwem sold all kinds of collectibles. And uh, you can't really see them all here, but I've seen several comments where uh, folks have started their coin collection uh, at Schwem's. And uh, some people said they also bought uh, arrowheads, including uh, Rick Lloyd. I believe this photo was uh, provided by David Shannon Boyd, uh, and it shows the uh, root beer uh, cask or keg or whatever you want to call it, where they could get their root beer out of it for only a nickel. So you had popcorn, you had uh, root beer, you had hot dogs, you had candy, what more could you ask for? Many pleasant memories came from this store for Washington students. The reason I know that is because on social media, anytime Schwem store is mentioned, it brings back fond memories. And here are some I thought you might enjoy looking at. How about the greatest candy store in the world? Schwem's Rubber Stamps, Nickel Root Beer, Popcorn, Freshly Popped, and Best Candy Counter in Town. Not to mention all the great things old Mr. Schwem's had on the walls. Anyone that went to school at Woodrow Wilson, St. Joseph, Trinity Lutheran, or Washington had to remember that icon of childhood days. My sixth grade teacher, Mrs. Monk, caught me eating in class. She took my huge bag of penny candy from Schwem's and gave everyone in class one piece of candy. Remember those big suckers you could buy and when you opened them up, if it had a free paper inside, you got another free sucker? Candy necklaces, hop over the Coke machines in the large standing coolers, open the top, put your money in, and fold the bottle out. Love that store. Always stopped on the walk from St. Joe's to Washington. They are responsible for my lifelong addiction to watermelon jolly ranchers. I remember going there at lunchtime at Washington Junior High for a scoop of ice cream dipped in chocolate for five cents. Mmm. Two dogs, two root beers, and a nickel each for candy for my sister and me, all for 50 cents. Yes, as the generation of the day goes by this store here, they can never imagine the wonderful memories so many of us have of Schwem's. Join me in my next video and We'll look at the Trinity Lutheran Church and a couple other things I think you might be interested in.